sometimes it just takes that one good moment, that one good day to completely change your lives. And is that that God intervening just by coincidence that the randomness of there's some chaos, right, in nature that we don't understand? The butterfly effect, for instance, you know, you do one good deed and that trickles down hundreds of people down the line. And that last person that it affects, it changes your life forever. Look at me, hot baby. Oh, oh, do by Jeep, let's get it. Oh, oh, look at me, hot baby. Do by Jeep, let's get it. Bags, expensive. Don't touch me. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Welcome to another episode of Stroke Obsessed Podcast. It's your host, your favorite host, KB. Today's guest is someone special. Uh, today's guest is someone who has been a big part of the origination of this podcast. I'll tell you why. Before I jump into that, let me go back how I met this individual and how and what he means. I met him about, I'd say about 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I was about, uh, like 10, 11, no. I was 21 years old, and uh, it was time I made this new friend, and this new friend of mine uh, one day decided to bring her brother along to Walmart. I'm like, oh, oh boy, this is gonna be a long day, all long night. And uh, next thing you know, uh, you know, skinny guy pulls up, you know, his baggy clothes and a, t a tent top or a t-shirt on, and and we had this conversation, and uh, and that was the first time we met. And uh, ever since then, I think we, uh, we've been very close, to say the least. This individual in front of me, I trust him with my life. He's probably my top, top three people in my life that I can trust with anything. And when I say anything, anything, I, my bank statement, my kids, my wife, everything I own, I can put in front of him, and I know I'll be safe. And I mean it. He's related to me by my wife, my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law, Bilal Rafiq, call him Billy Boy. He's an engineer by trade, science geek, would you say? <laughs> um, sure. You know, he loves cars. He's here in town visiting me. And uh, I said, why not? To, why, what would be a better time to bring him on? So, Billy, welcome to the podcast, man. Thanks, man. It's a pleasure. How's the intro for you, buddy? It's good. Yeah, I mean, in a nutshell. Yeah. We've been through a <laughs> lot, man. We've seen each other grow, <laughs> gosh, from... Uh, not really having anything to our name and uh we've built a lot yeah. uh and we've helped each other build it oh, sure. right oh, sure. uh maybe you want to clarify the influence i've had on the the title of the podcast yeah. i forgot the title even before that i was going before that so this channel is made this channel is made for to be a review channel we re yeah, we came up with this idea when review sneakers gadgets and mm -hmm. different type of things right what was it called? Syndicate Media. Right, right. Because we wanted to be out in the fringes. We didn't want to be mainstream, let's say. Yeah. The year was 2016. I was working for a company called Azul. And my job there was to look at YouTube most of the day and find um, review channels so we can send our product. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, we can do this together. So we had a, a townhouse back then. And we mm -hmm. had a room upstairs, my office room. We had lighting. We had everything set up. We had a we had a little stage set up there, mm -hmm. and we we reviewed your your Jordans, right? No, your Lebrons, right? It was the Lebron thirteens. Gosh, I don't even remember. I remember the red ones. Yeah, I still have the video. Um, it's really awkward. It's, it's cringy it's, it's, to go back cringy. to look at it. It's it. cringy. So that was one video, and then we did my Nikes, my skateboard Nikes, and the we did some other stuff. But then there's one video you did on your own. Yeah, that went viral. Completely different. Talk it about wasn't that. even a review. Break that down. What was that about? So the Samsung TVs at the time, it was one of the first smart TVs. So it had all these apps on there. But the app store itself would like self-delete. And so what I discovered, just kind of toggling through, I was able to reset the TV. But it took like probably four or five layers diving into the settings. And I, I did a quick search on YouTube first right, because everyone does that, is to see if there was a solution out there. And I realized there wasn't. So I'm like, you know what? This is an opportunity. I made the it. video by myself. I just had a tripod that, that we were using. Yeah. Filmed the TV as I'm toggling through the screen. Yeah. And then I just posted. It was like two minutes tops. 
And I think within like six months to a year, it really started to kind of pick up some steam. And it hit, I think, a few million views at the time. We generated like uh, pennies of revenue. So. I, I think, think so. But it was even viral. And yeah. yeah. And yeah, I mean, yeah. I remember that after that, it's every morning to wake up and check my phone, my email, and I to get the notification from YouTube. This person liked it. This person liked it. This person is making comment. And it just took off. And I, was, was that any intention behind that to be viral? No, actually, I just wanted to help people. Yeah. I, there wasn't a solution out there. And I was like, honestly, this is just, it's a simple fix. But I think some people are just not going to figure it out. So I might as well just make a video and then post it. That, when, you said, when you said something right there, it's so super, super crucial. You, we just want to help people out. And that was some pure intention of helping. They will know. I don't think you were, if you, your face not in there, so it's not for clout, right? No. Like oh. It's your voice. But I, I did a few takes, I remember, because my the pace of the video... I think I stumbled a few times. Yeah. So I did a few takes on it because I, I wanted to sound good yeah. too. I think everyone, most people, when they hear themselves on yeah, tape, everyone. they kind of cringe yeah. and sure. they don't feel comfortable. I wanted it to be sort of perfect. Sure. And uh, I think that I could have probably branched out and continued that. I, I did a few other videos that got a couple thousand views. Yes. In like uh, a, we did this U-Haul thing. The 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 there was a pod. Right, pods. I was moving from Oregon to Atlanta. That was a good one. And we were using the pod for the first time. And I yeah, just posted a video of how they how they you know uh, drop it off, uh, how they pick it up, how the whole you know service works. The pod was good. And you, one day you put a live uh, video of the hurricane. Oh yeah, that was interesting too. Yeah. But nothing beat the. Um, we had a buddy who was a part of this, David. Right, so right. You yeah. just know Dave. I think you did his, one of his cars. Yeah, yeah. What were we doing exactly? He, by the way, he didn't watch this once. So shout out to our boy David in, in Pembroke Pines in Weston where he lives now. But he, I he, wonder if he yeah. still has that STI. Yeah, that, that's what it was. Yeah. I think it was a cold air intake install. Yeah. And he had like a big turbo on there. I think it was an upgraded cold air intake. Yeah. I mean, that thing did like 600 horsepower. It was, I mean, it's all wheel drive. He's into was, cars. He's into cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless David. Good guy. David, you watching this, man. We love you, man. But yeah, you did something with him also, as well. And that was it after that. You went to back to college. I think, you know, so you were back in college and you got your job and you got busy with life. Mm. And then, of course, like everything else, I had a baby. My daughter, Isa, your, 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 your niece, Isa. And I think we just went different direction with the channel. Mm. But that, that so, so back to the topic. So that channel was there. And I, and I call him one night and I go, hey, like, Dude, I'm, I want to open my, I want to start, I want to continue this channel, but I want to make it an interview channel. You know, that's an inspiration to Joe Joel Roke and Howard Stern and Patrick, but David, do you mind if I use it? And he's like, yeah, take it, man. I already had about 300 subscribers, subs, mm -hmm. 350, mm -hmm. 400. And it was a nice uh, launch, right? And, and a lot of, um, not, I don't know, a lot, but like about 40, 50 of them like, left after they saw the interviews coming. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them stayed. It's interesting how they did that. Yeah. You know, a lot of time people subscribe and they, they don't even know what's happening. Yeah, I have to. I mean, they turn off the notifications. No. It's just in the back pages of yeah. like, the bottom of the list of their subscribers. Yeah, uh, that they well the channels they subscribe to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, your platform has given me some interest into some other folks in the industries and and the walks of life that I've that you've had on here. And uh, no, you're doing great, man. Thank it's, you, man. But as the name goes, right, we were. Yeah, I wanted let's to go use to, let's go that. So let's recap. Yeah. So you helped me. We both we were partners in, in the channel. We built it up to a certain point. You did more, you did amazing videos that went viral. Then I said, hey, KB, well, it's a blog. can I take it and move forward with it? He said, sure. Then I was going back and forth and name a bunch of different names. And then let's take over the story. From well, here. you wanted to have the word stroke in there because it – it's i mean it was the most important part of your life yeah. arguably right mm -hmm. i mean there's you've had you've had children you, you got married to my sister um and there's going to be many great moments to come along but that you wanted to you wanted to be that point in 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 your podcast right so you wanted to use it and I, there's a there's a play on words right it's the stroke of success like it's a it kind of happens by chance but at the same time it's 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 a it's a very neat thing to happen 
for you. So yeah. you wanted to pivot off that point, and it I just came it just came to mind. You, you we kind of debated though. You yes. didn't you you didn't feel like maybe it was, no, no. It was when you said it, I was I was with it. It was like too on the nose, but then you you were like it. Eureka, that's it. Yeah, when yeah. you said it, I, and people gave me other uh, my best friend Ramir, my best friend Omar, and a lot of people said things to me. But your idea, when I heard it, I'm like, um, yeah, it was like wow, like that light bulb goes and it went. And it was so I remember it was so random because you just asked me it, and it was the first thing that came to mind. Your mouth, yeah, you told me that. That's insane, man. So you've been part of this channel in so many ways. Finally, you're on here and. We have many more uh, interviews with you and, and have involvement with you. Oh, no, actually, you've been on the channel before, to think of it. I did this uh, debate for guns. It was a virtual one. Right. I forgot but about that. But that was the uh, predated, that was like sort of success in this uh, infant in form. Right, yeah. Virtual Zoom, bad yeah. quality. You're in your underwears in your house. I'm in my yeah. boxers in my house. <laughs> we had a buddy on there from North Carolina and talk about guns. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, I'm not very, I don't have a lot of background in that topic. Yeah. Uh, but we were one of the yeah. smartest people I know. And I, and I always come to you for stuff. I'm like, you know what, jump on, be part of that. That was a good one, by the way. People gave me feedback. Really? Mm. Uh, let's go back. I'm going to come, come back to stroke and see how that was for you and perspective was. But that you were a big part of that. You were there from from end, from end beginning to end. But let's go back. So how old were you exactly when we first met? The year was 2002. Four, four. Yeah, so that's, you said 20 years ago, so that's when I was 14. 14 years yeah. old. You were in driving. Yeah, I, w I mean, I was so disoriented as yes. a teenager. I remember <laughs> that. I, I had no sense of style. Uh, I had no good, I had no communication skills. Uh, I, I couldn't even introduce myself. You kind of being that hard. You had a style. You yeah, had, was, you, you had a bad, you're a bad boy. It's a style, I yeah, would say. it was kind of baggy You were not a herb. And, you were not a herb, I'll tell you that much. Like some... <laughs> Well, I don't want to say name, but you know, some of our people back, you know, back in that year time were, you know, the, the herbs, you know, herb is, herb is a Brooklyn word. I know it's yeah, a nineties yeah, term. Yeah, uh, 80s, 90s term. Simon used to use it quite a you bit did? too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's like the kind of like a geek, like geek and like, um, yeah, more passive, right, passive, more reserved. Yeah. Yeah. So you were one of, not one of those by far, but you were 14. Yeah. 14. And I, when we met, I remember I was quite excited. Yeah. Right. So I I was like, who is this friend we're meeting? Right. Kind of suspiciously. Yeah. And, but I was excited because, and it was honestly the only way she could even get out of the house. So yeah. I had to trek along. Um, why? But, Break it down. Why? Well, because we come from a, a Pakistani household. And for the most part, men get a lot more leeway sure. than the, the daughters do. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so she needed an excuse right and so we were going to the movies we we're going with her other friends but it was all a, a scheme right yes. to get there but i was excited because i heard a lot of good things okay um and because she was pretty even though i was again i was kind of young sort of naive from my perspective yeah uh she was pretty open to me on who she's yeah. talking to and who she's maybe interested in and she, she honestly valued my opinion too yeah, she, even at that she, even now I mean, of course now she, yeah more you are Probably coming from a better experience yeah. <laughs> now than from before. Yeah. And w well, we met you, but, you know, I don't remember the exact, I don't remember the first time we met. Walmart. But I, I think I was too, I don't know. Nighttime was, was Walmart. I don't remember that moment. But what I do remember is when we went to uh, an NSU pa Pakistani event. Yeah. And there was like an, an arcade area. There was a ping pong table. Okay. And you were really, really into ping pong. Yeah, that was good. And I remember I, I yeah. was watching you play. Yeah, yeah. You got really into it, but you were yeah. drenched yeah. afterwards. Um, but since day one, your charisma oh, man. and your uh, approach to just being genuine yeah. to people you're meeting new, uh, making them feel welcome, um, and just making them feel part of the conversation or part of the circle. You never want to have anyone left out. Mm. And for me, that's that's something I, I, I really have taken on from you. Oh, wow. And I've, I've, I've appreciated it since that day one. But that's a, that's a character attribute um, that I've wanted to adapt wow, in man, my personality. Knew that. Wow, that's so sweet of you, Bob. Yeah, I was saving 20 years oh. to tell you that. <laughs> that is so sweet of him, man. Oh, my <laughs> God. It made me cry. No, man, I never knew that. 
Wow. Yeah. Well, you and also, I mean, I can't, you know, you were that masculine figure. In my yeah. Life. Also my father. Sure. Also uh, my other brother-in-law, sure. JT. Of course. Uh, and, and my cousins as well. But you yeah. were a, a lot closer to me. Sure. Right? I get and, it. I mean, of course, dad, your father, when I call him dad, my father, my father-in-law. Um, and he's older, right? He, he was from a different country. Right. Yeah, he immigrated here. Yeah. He's not in tune with the culture. Sure. Um, well, he thinks he is. <laughs> but <laughs> we yeah. call him the Pakistani yeah, cowboy. Cowboy. Yeah. yeah. But like even our older brother-in-law, um, Jay, is, Jawad Bhai, I mean, he's awesome and he's amazing. And oh yeah, he's a great. I can't. I mean, he's such a hard him. worker, oh. and uh, I mean the things he, the, the way he thinks and analyzes. There's so many great qualities that I've also learned from him as well. Me and you both, man. I think like financial responsibility, mm -hmm. per perseverance. I mean, he's he came to this country like 20 years ago, and he's done really well for himself. And actually, we should have him on next time. We'll see if we can talk about our brotherhood. But he's amazing, too. Shout out to Javad Bhai, Javad Taki. Mr. But, JT. Mr. JT. Um, but thank you for the compliment. That's very sweet of you. And that means you earned lot. it. <laughs> it means a lot to me. Um, my first thing of you. So, for the record... We're, we're Pakistani. We're born in America. Our parents from from another country. We're Muslim. So in our culture, back then it was more more conservative. Now, now girls and guys can hang out more easily in high school. Mm. I'm hearing. I, we're oh, we're sure. both out of high school. I mean, you're younger than me, but I I, I have younger friends and cousins. I look at them. So back then it was different. So, so I talked to a sister, and we started talking. And our friendship started, and she, the way she talked about you, man, man, she still loves you. She still loves you the same way she loved you back then. Mm. And I remember one time, <laughs> she like you got you went playing basketball and you got into a fight and you got hurt. Mm. And she's like, oh, she called me and they all worried. I'm like, you know, good for him. You know, he should get learn a lesson. <laughs> and she got so pissed at me. She's like, how can you do this? How can you say that to? Uh, how can you say, sorry, man, my mic's right here. How can you say this about him? He's like your younger brother. I'm like, we're not even married yet. Like, who are you telling younger brother? And I'm like, I thought about it, right? Like, and I called her back. I'm so sorry. You know, you're right. And mm. I'm like, you know, why you need some tough love. Like, why, why, why do, you, why was he with these, you know, these hoodlums in the, either way? And she's very, very, very defensive. Mm. And to this day, she's very defensive about you. <laughs> Um, you guys have this beautiful relationship. And I always talk about it with mm. you guys. It's so cute. You guys look alike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, right, way, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I consider that I was raised by you know three moms. Yeah, so you, you said it today, yeah, yesterday to your mom on the other day. We have you know, of course, the uh, the, other the leader of the tribe, yeah. right? Uh, our matriarch, yeah. and then you have uh, Samita, yeah, eldest um, sister, my my eldest sister, and then you have Saima. Yes, uh, but there was all this feminine energy as sure. i was growing up and i i think it it did very well for me as well yes it did because i mean i have a a beautiful relationship with my wife right you now do. she's my high school sweetheart no most women in your life the most old woman in your life i don't I mean, think I've, i have yeah i think i've established some a really good relationship with them because it's there's a different upkeep let's say with the relationship with 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 the females of your life sure. right in general yeah, yeah and it's important to be very attentive and listening um responding when it makes sense sure. to not being so impulsive um and and thinking that you can solve their problems sure. right sometimes it's just being there and just listening um but it's also picking up the phone when they call um because you know what they need you and and that's kind of that relationship i've established well, all three women in your life are very strong women yes you're, you're, you're blessed in that way. I mean, it's to have strong women, it's, it's a different experience, you know. I, I think I added to you oh, yeah. a lot. Yeah, I mean, they were very self-driven, and they weren't they weren't passive. No. Right? They didn't, they knew what was right, and they stepped up and spoke up when they needed to, um, and, and they've done a lot of challenging things in their lives. Yeah. Um, you know, Simon completing her doctorate degree and and now on this journey with you opening up your med spa. Um, my mom migrating from he here, oh. with not knowing the language, not knowing the system. Not only that, she comes from a very affluent, wealthy background to America and starting from the bottom. That itself is a huge struggle. She made it. You yeah. Know. 
We raised, take that for granted. Three amazing kids you raised. Yeah. Which is a challenge itself. And, and I mean, we don't forget it because we're, we're reminded of it quite, quite often. Quite often, which is important. I sure. think. I think we forget how privileged we are Absolutely. in the situation we are. I mean, we've we've made it far through our own hard work, but they made the ultimate sacrifice 100%. coming here. Yeah. No. I mean, Samuel loves you. Samita loves you. Samita, I see your thing with Samita. You know, it's different. It's it. It. it she has a name for you. Yeah, Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> and the first time I met her and you together, I'm like, what the hell is Bobby about? It's so cute. And I was like, that's your thing with her. And yeah. it's so cute. And she's, she's very unique herself. And she has a beautiful heart. Yeah. And she's, she's, and she is like, I think a lot of times she's like the strong one. It comes when, when there's, there's a little bit of conflict in the family, mm-hmm. she'll be there and say, hey, let everything cool down. And, and she'll, she'll take charge and put people in their corners. Mm-hmm. And you know, and we'll move forward. Every family has like an anchor, sure. And I've always considered Samita, Samita to be that anchor. Me too. Uh, emotionally too. I mean, she isn't an emotional being, sure. But when times are tough, yeah, she send she tends to be more composed. Yes. And you can lean on her in those positions. Yeah, I mean, her her background upbringing, upbringing. I'm, I'm, I'll let her share that when she comes to my podcast. But she's. It it, it it shaped her up to be the strong woman that she sure. is. She had to be very independent. She, yes, young and, age. At a very young age. Yeah. yeah. And she had a baby very young age. Mm-hmm. I mean, her baby was with us this weekend. I mean, they look like sisters. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. It's funny thing, your mom and her are not that much clo- that further in age. Right. Mom had Samita at like 18, 19. Right. Samita had Alina at 18, 19. Right. And those three generations sit together. I don't know if you ever noticed them. It's the most cutest thing in the world. I see, when I see mom, Samita, Saima, and Alina together, like, like, man, there's, there, the way they bond. Mm. And then they, they skip that. You have Aida, Niman, and Sophie. Mm. But them, the, but besides those three, those four, like they have a very really unique rapport, right? Yeah, we're, we're such a close-knit family. Yes. And again, coming back to how we establish our relationships together. I mean, we, we're always going to have conflicts. Of course. Right? It's inevitable. Yeah. Um, how you re- resolve that is what is going to maintain that relationship. And we have... we. You know, we've made some mistakes in the past, but sure. what we've now learned coming this far is that if there is a conflict, try to di- try to resolve your emotionals, your emotions first, and then come to the table and then try to right your wrongs. Yeah. Um, and I think everyone subscribed now to that You're philosophy. Right. I think everyone does. Everyone and it, does. it, it works yeah. now. It, it does. We all, we're all going to say things that even in a in a in a humor setting unintentionally could, this morning, right? What are <laughs> right. little. And uh, it conflict. happened. It happened, right? But I, I appreciate it because it helps me reflect on what I say and how I say it. Because sometimes we're just impulsive, yes. and we say things in a way that do hurt each other. Yeah, and that's important that we reflect on that and say, okay, I should have formatted that a little bit different. Yeah, so that I can promote the best version of you. Mm. That's strong. Right. That I think that's how you build teams that's how you build families that's how you build a company is to make sure that the things you say the things you do is always promoting the enhancement of that other person and and it's it's a really hard formula it's everyone's got a different formula right we what you said that right there man i'm telling you that's gonna be it's gonna be a real my the uh, social media <laughs> i mean you said it's so 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 uh nicely i'm so proud of you man you come a long way um i've been in leadership for a little bit of time now and you said it man as a leader and looking back now i think like everyone in, in the, our family is a leader in their own right right think about it yeah right and um sure some of us, some of us are in corporations some of us are in, in, in teaching and in medicine and this aesthetics so or whatever it may be in real estate or uh, quality control, whatever it may be, engineering. But in their own right, we are leaders. Yeah. And when you have that many leaders together, you're going to have some friction. I mean, right. Yeah, because no one's, no one's a, I mean, very rare is a, a leader coming off the press, right? Like just, like we're not just like naturally, there are naturally born leaders, right? Yeah. Uh, but they still have to refine their skill sure. set over time because there's a few individuals you're going to come across who just that 
standardized formula is just sure. not going to work. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, in any aspect of any of your life, even when it comes to being in at a younger age, if like you're in high school and you're put on a group project and you someone elects you as a leader, mm -hmm. then I mean, it's to a lesser extent you got uh, you have less to lose, let's yeah. say. But you still got to you still got to find those skills and we are naturally all of us are leaders, right? We want to inspire each other. Because collectively, as humans, that's how we got this far. Our species deviated from the other primate species, and those guys all died out. Mm. Whereas our Homo sapiens have made it this far because we are we're social beings, and we can inspire and work together. Yeah. Well said. Once again, good. Um, I think looking back. It was some some. Let me just, let's go back to history in the timeline, and it'll make a lot of sense. The backstory, what I'm about to, well, what topic I'm going to get into. We met, we hit it off right away. I would say. Yeah, I, I mean, from a from a, a bromantic perspective, yeah. I was kind of mesmerized. Yeah, because you were well, charismatic. Yeah. I mean, you were you were just you were in your groove. You're in your sure. flow state, and you're just you're a person. I, I definitely wanted to yeah. uh, oh, emulate. That's, that again, yeah. that means a lot to me. When yeah. you say that. Yeah, you know it means so, so much to me because I don't. I would think I would never think that's the case because you're so so you're like a, you're brilliant, man. You're, you're in, so intelligent and such a brainiac, and I'm not like I'm not in, like an intellectual like intellectual person like you are. So like I would never think you would look at me at like that. But that you saying that, man, I means a lot to me, you know, and I appreciate that, of man. Course, man. Um, going back, we met. Your sister and I got close. I fell in love with her. She fell in love with me. My backstory, of course, my mom and dad got divorced. My mom died. My mom died the month before I met you. So I was like fresh, you know, burying my mom and meeting your sister. Your, mom, your sister was like the light in my life at that time. And then I met you, right? So I lost, I lost my mom 2020, 20, 20, 20, 2004, November. Mm. I meet your sister December of 20, 2004. And I've been met that same year, mm. 2004, December. I didn't realize that. Yes, literally a month after mm. in Walmart. I remember that us meeting the first time. Mm. Um, and then I came to your house. I did a real estate. I was about to do a p potential real estate deal for your mom and your oh, dad. Right. Piece of land. And mm -hmm. that's how I was introduced into the family. Mm -hmm. And um, it, just, it was all fine and dandy. But when they found out that I liked your sister, like, whoa, mm -hmm. wait a minute, like, the brakes went all you know all the way down, mm -hmm. um, and that's what the, I think. A lot of growing pains came for all of us. Mm. I'll jump in that, like from your perspective. I mean, I, again, I was in my own little world. Yes, you know, I'm a a, a young teenager riled riled up by hormones. Uh, I had my own. Uh, per, I was pursuing my own desires. Let's say uh, video games, in sports. You're very it was athletic. I love basket. I, I still love basketball. You're uh, really good at it, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I could shoot a few threes no, and uh, cross up a few people if I'm uh, in, in good yeah. in good health that day. No, man, you're good. Um, humble. But there's a lot of expectations, right? She is sort of the crowning achievement of the family, right? So it's understandable. The man that was going to carry her through the rest of her life had to meet a certain threshold sure. of expectations it, it was uh, insurmountable i think that it was not realistic from their perspective i mean when when you're in a, in the pakistani culture you have parties and come together and and the aunties right the the women they they discuss and they're basically matchmakers they're Pairing up who they think and expect would make ideal couples. Not really using personality or character yeah. to align them. It's usually by looks or career ambitions. It's of, of family statuses matching or not. Right. You know, and and class, right? Class, That's yeah. something that comes into play. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, you just you weren't in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. um, of course, on... 
on paper you yeah. didn't but when it came to the real you right you were it. yeah i mean i i i knew you you were that you could be that person yeah. since day one thank you just because like I, I recognized the way you treated me sure and her you know making sure we don't pay for anything you drove us everywhere yeah. um everything was managed by you and that's i think an ideal man right yeah i listen like looking back now i totally get it i think a lot of things didn't go in my favor but going back to we're, we're driving here we're talking about branding and we're talking, we're talking about my my mentor uh, my OG mentor, Ehab, we taught him, uh, um, shout out to Ehab, if you're watching this, love you. He taught me uh, branding, um, salesmanship, marketing. I think if I had better branding, if I packaged a certain way, I think I would have been able to by bypass a lot of situations. To Because according to Pakistani standards and looks, I'm tall, fair skin, you know, they, 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 they're, they're used to be big into fair skinned people, but now I think they don't, we don't care. Mm. We come a long way as, as a community. And I don't want to make sure. people look, audi audience to look at this and watch it. They go, oh man, these people are, are like, what are they, you know, animals? No, this is like 20 years ago. And, you know, pe people watching, they have to understand, like, our parents just moved 40 years ago. Yeah. So, like, you know, like, uh, just like uh, all the other cultures out there, like, we have our dysfunction, right? Right. The fact that my mom died and my father and I are not close and we're not close, even that close now, we were not close back then. Mm. It's like, like, oh, well, there's no backing there. You know what I mean? There's no foundational. Like, I think if I had parents, I think it would have been like half the battle would have been okay. Mm. Um, number one. And then number two, like I was finding my, my, my careers in many ways and I was kind of soul searching. Mm -hmm. And then number three, I was immature. Like, if I can go back to myself now, I would smack myself in the head and say, first of all, get a nice haircut. Be more presentable. Speak, yes. Uh, mm. People say, speak with manners. You know, be more positive. Mm. I was a bit of a rebel. Like, if you see Indian movies and you feel like the old James, you know who James Dean is? You're young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a rebel. I was always this kind of a rebel. And you yeah. Yeah. Don't oh, shit, you can't shit. A chip on his yeah, shoulder. And yeah. I'm a little fucking, fucking better than you, and what the fuck do you think you are? Yeah. The Brooklyn comes out a little bit, and like, <laughs> and, and, um, and I think those things all added up. I also think on the other side of it, I, my in laws didn't know any better either. Because the same thing you said, if they got to know the real me, which they did eventually, and they said yes to me. We have to give them full credit, they mean, eventually. Mm -hmm. But, by the way, it wasn't their job to put that much work into it. I mean, they they had a huge influence in the strategy that took Saima through her life. Yeah. Right? They, I mean, they, they curated all parts of her life. Sure. And they wanted to have a lot of control over this aspect. Yeah, but not only that, most... Pakistani parents are like that, you think? It depends, right? I've seen I've seen a whole spectrum of them now, yeah. right? There's there's the conservative type, sure. who follow the traditional values, and and I mean, there's still people having arranged marriages, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing that's, wrong with that. That's if, it, a, if it goes for you, it goes. That's a format that you could still use, but there's a lot of I think predominantly there's mo uh, moderate, right? These are they're in the middle. Right. They're not swaying to more conservative or more progressive type Mus being a Muslim or, or just being a Pakistani. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because there's also non-Muslim Pakistanis, right? Yes. That still ascribe to some cultural norms. Um, but they, it depends, right? I think, I think you still have the same variety of parents and, and even like outside of the culture. So I think it just depends. And it, it depends on the, the education of the parents depends on uh, who their their social network is, who they talk with. Are they more assimilated with the American culture? Are they more staying to the Pakistani community? It, I think it depends on how much influence they have on who or 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 how their son or daughter are going to get married. Because I married outside the religion and outside the culture. You did, um, <clears throat> and I was always 
I was always breaching that boundary. I mean, my parents always saw that. I, I didn't even like Pakistani food for the longest time. I refused to pray and, and, and follow the religion. And I think they just modified their strategy with me, right, as a child, whereas Saima is kind of more passive. She went along with whatever strategy they, they gave to her. Yeah. Oh. You said it. You see, best, 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 um, best way to describe it as you guys you did right now. I agree with you. You know, my and I said it in a previous interview right here actually too. Like um, it was it was a real, and like you know, if I was to be in their position, that probably would be the same way. I would probably I don't know if I would be exactly the same way. I'm a little different. Like I would say the way I looked at it and the way I look at it right now. It's a little joke I make with Simo. I look at myself back then as a raw, raw piece of land. Mm. This land is uh, it's a bit damaged, maybe. Some you know hurricanes went through it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the foundation of the soil, the ground, the location is a good, it's a good location. It's a mm-hmm. good foundation. But it's, it's, uh, it needs some work. Um, uh, it needs some work and mm-hmm. some... some uh, you're we are a science guy. What do you? How do you grow? Uh, it's called cultivation, right? Right. And I think I think this is a good topic because right now in the dating world, everyone is unfortunately being conditioned to look for this ideal partner. Yes. Right. And even from now, if you want to talk about Pakistani culture, there's more of an influence from the parents to find this ideal partner, yeah. right? Because all of the sons and daughters are the best, they're the cream of the crop, sure. right? And that's that's fine. They want the best. There's best intentions behind it. But what happens is that you start searching around and you look at all these red flags. And they're false red flags, yeah. in, in my opinion. Talk about it earlier. Because we, every person is still working on themselves. Yes. They're still growing. And I think if you prove yourself to that yeah. partner that you are trying, you're doing this, you're doing that, and you own your mistakes yes. when they do happen, I think if you can recognize that in a partner, that's an ideal partner. Wow. Because no one's perfect. No one's, no one's going to make mistakes. No one's perfect, man. And you said it, you know, and, and going back to my situation, like, and I thought laughs about it, you know, uh, and eventually these investors, <laughs> they bought into it. Yeah. And they put a lot of effort into it, a lot of love, and yep. and, and 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 I think now it's been. <laughs> I think the ROI has been good for them, everyone involved, sure, right? Sure, yeah. And, and both sides. I mean, yeah, I, I think we've come a long way. Your parents, to me, for me, are my parents now, and I love them to death. Yeah, I see that. I, I mean, you, yeah. I mean, I live at a distance, right? Yeah. I live in Atlanta, um, and I I'm always appreciative to you. I, I I don't tell you enough. Yeah. But I mean, you're. You're you're like they're, you're like, <laughs> I guess it's wrong to say. You're the second string son, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's the wrong way to put it. No, but, no, uh, I see what you mean. I see what no, you but mean. you're you're definitely filling in the gaps that yeah. I I can't do from a distance, mm. right? Sure. And yeah, I, but they, I super you know, appreciate that. No, and by the way, so I mean, yeah. it goes two ways, right? Sure, I'm filling the gaps you you can't do because your your distance and your your busy schedule. And by the way, you are a phenomenal son. You are there many, 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 many times. You are there financially. Emo- I don't put your business out there, but I know you do a lot of financially, emotionally, physically for your parents. And uh, and God bless you for that. Uh, in my my case, I think it's a two way street. Mm. I think they have accepted me like a son. Mm. They treat me like a son. Um, they consult with me. They um, they have nothing held back now. And vice versa. So we come a long way. The point of this I want to share with the audience is that if you're getting into a marriage or getting into a relationship with someone in a partnership or a friendship and you face trouble early on or some hiccups or some roadblocks, don't give up. And going back to your point, um, it's the first room they say never say um on a and uh, speaking, but mm. going back to your point, when you make a mistake, say sorry, mm-hmm. uh, own own your shit, mm-hmm. take accountability, right? No matter how young or or, or old you are, mm-hmm. be open and open 
to people's personalities. Mm. That's an issue I think we all had in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Your wife is from outside the culture, also the religion. Mm -hmm. We love her. Shout out to Vanessa uh, Van Van is her name. We'll get we'll get we'll get into why we call I have why I call her Van Van. My my have allergies. Um, she has a lot of amazing qualities, but she's not Pakistani or Muslim. Right. Right. I had a lot of good qualities, but my mom was dead. My dad wasn't there, and I wasn't as educated or successful as I am now. Success is is subjective, but mm -hmm. on piece of paper, I'm right. a little more, a little bit more ahead of life than I was back then. And we're very quick to judge people. Yeah. Yeah, it's we we are unfortunately we're very superficial humans. I mean, if you if you think about it as a species, I mean, the way you chose your mate, we're talking about primitive times, sure. right? You look at the health of that person. You look at are they limping? Um, are they? Is their complexion good? Um, to, th these are like good signs for a person that you should uh, mate with, right? And so. We're all innately just kind of judging each other in a superficial sense, right? Because from from a from a fatherly and motherly perspective, right, for their children, because they want them to pair up with a, a healthy male, right? right, to guide their daughter into reproducing, right? It's the end and, goal, right? And here. protect, and protect, and to protect yes. her. It's to protect the lineage, sure, right? That's the end goal here. Uh, so we, we're always like being pulled in all directions by our subconscious mind. Actually, this is this is an interesting little segue. You're the one that got me into the law of attraction, and I started reading a lot of books on the unconscious and subconscious mind. Mm. That dictates probably what ninety five percent percentages change, but it dictates majority of our life. Yes, it does. Right. So. Uh, this is this is just a topic I wanted to bring up because I am very connected to you on this topic. Yes. And we've had a number of discussions on this. Debates, discussions, back and forth, brainstorming sessions. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 unfortunately I think it's been hijacked by a lot of uh woo woo or the influencing community to some regard just sure. to, to sell uh to sell strategies, sure. to, to, to sell like classes. But in the essence, it's just about dreaming. Sure. Dreaming hard and then writing down a script of how are you gonna you're gonna execute that dream, right? Yes. It's, yeah, the fa the foo foo version of it's interesting too. And I think I don't wanna get very I don't wanna get very controversial, but that's where you know look that's where Religion comes into it too, right? So my latest stance on f law of attraction, if I shared it with you or not, mm -hmm. subconscious, subconscious, conscious mind, mm -hmm. um, beta, it's like a theta or beta stage as we're born, mm -hmm. zero to like five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. That's the most vulnerable t forming areas of our brain, or sub our, our not brain, I'm sorry, or of our subconscious mind. Mm. So the, the parents arguing about money, money doesn't grow in trees. Now for you, Money is hard to achieve. Mm -hmm. Money is hard to get by. Mm -hmm. You have to have either the last name of Winfrey, uh, uh, Rothschild, yes, Trump, yeah. Obama, whatever yeah. it may be, or the Ambani's, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, your color is not as their, as theirs is. So what do you think you're gonna do? You think you're gonna be a you're gonna be a CEO of the company? Mm. No way. And then you take that, right? You program that in your subconscious mind, and now your habits will be based on those subconscious thoughts you've had. Mm -hmm. uh, no, sorry, your subconscious thoughts will then will translate into your conscious thoughts. Your mm -hmm. conscious thoughts then form, formulate your habits. Your habits then formulate your reality. Mm. Also, there's a part of our brain, I'm trying to verify this, and maybe you can find that for me. It's called the RAS, the reticular activating system. It's like mm -hmm. a scanner. That's what that all it is. A lot of traction, they say that, well, you know, you can, you, if you see signs popping up, no. You're telling yourself, it's, it's called a white Tesla test. You've probably heard about it. Mm -hmm. Mean talk about white Tesla, and we go out on the road back home, drive mm -hmm. home. There's likelihood that we're going to see more white Teslas. Mm -hmm. Is it that they're more white Tesla by chance, or is it the fact that they're always there, but now the RAS 
have that program to search for that out right. there. Right. Yeah. So law of attraction in, in many ways, I say like, for example, you, I want to become an entrepreneur. I want to have X, Y, Z revenue. Mm -hmm. You'd be very specific with the goals. And, and, and then you have to ritualize it enough to you program the subconscious mind, your habits in form, and the RAS will have that to look for and will guide you through the journey. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're overriding and creating an operating system in your head so that you can detect the opportunities that come up in life. Bingo. That you weren't noticing before. That's it. Yeah. Because, I mean, it has also to do with putting yourself in the right place, right? Because, right? I mean, you, if you're trying to become an entrepreneur in the solar energy realm, you don't want to go hang out with the, the oil guys, right? You want to go hang out with the, the green energy guys, right? It's just an actor, if basketball you be, player. Yeah, yeah. If you want to become a basketball player, then hang out with people who are also aspiring to, to become professional basketball and players. And trainers and coaches and put you, push you there and get you there and train, teach right, you Right, because there. there's a whole ecosystem behind right. it. And in order to tap into it, you just got to be in the right place, connected to the right people. But you also got to say the right things. You have to be knowledgeable. And it's it's about reading. It's about the work you have to put into it. A lot of work. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of the law of attraction thing is lost in translation. And some of them do sell them. And it's all this in a weird way where you just you just think and just think about it all day long and yeah. look at a vision board. And that's it. It's going to appear in life. And that's where... 99% of people are like, no, fuck that. <laughs> Other ways, like, oh, well, God was put in front of you. Well, I don't believe in God. Well, the universe was put in front yeah. of you. That's the woo woo and type. And that's yeah. the woo woo type. Yeah. That's why I think you always were like, well, no, dude, that's not. Yeah, unfortunately, it gets flooded sometimes. And I think it, it kind of tapered off because people realize that it's just not. It, I mean, there's a whole subculture there, too, because, um, I mean, it. if you wanted to achieve better mental health, if you wanted to do stuff for your more internal dialogue, then yeah. it does have its application in that point. But to actually gain money or financial success in that aspect, you it has to be more in a practice setting, right? It, I agree you with you. Like you said, it. if I'm, yeah. if, like, if everyone knows I look up to Patrick, but David. And oh, by the way, I segue to that. My first time meeting Patrick, but David was when? Gosh, what was this, four years ago? So you want to share my admiration for Patrick, but David, am I am I a fanboy? Or what, what would you say? <laughs> you, sometimes you get annoyed with all the texts I send to you. Well, no, you 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 really. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of great qualities of this cat. Of course, man. I mean, he's he's someone you definitely want to emulate, right? And in a lot of regards. Um, so not, not in some, but yeah, but in, in many. I mean, right. there's some things I don't person. agree with. Every right? person, right? Uh, but he's just, he's definitely got a. Uh, very good opinions and sure. perspectives in life. Um, he's re he's re really well read. Yes, he is. Um, and it just makes him a great person to follow. And leader, a good leader again. A right? good leader too. Yeah. So I think I, no, I think I know Vanessa, your wife, my our sister in law, our sister. I think realized my forties was coming. Tell the story how the whole thing. Yes. So my my wife is always good at choosing. Yes. Gifts. And I, I always leave it up to her. Uh, I try to gain that in me, yes. but she's very a attentive to detail. Um, and so she was happening to just, I think, just Google it. I think she herself Google it. She's like, oh, what about that guy? He listens to a lot. Yeah. That he fanboys over. Yes. And uh, I was, she Google it. She's like, by the way, he's going to be in Miami. And I'm like, oh crap, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Let's let's get it for him. And we looked at him. It's it's pricey. It was pricey. The cheapest one was what was like thousand, eight hundred bucks, eight hundred bucks, eight hundred bucks. The lowest tier. It's the entry level. Um, and I was like, I will get that for him, and then yeah. he can upgrade it if, if he, he wants, wants more. Yeah. So yeah, we bought it. I was so excited to get yes. it to you because so I was like, this is the best gift I think it was. you will it probably was. ever received. It was till this day. And that then, and the watch your parents got me. But anyway, go ahead, continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got to drop that. Yeah. Compliment there. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> but it's a nice gift. But go ahead. No, I, I think that's a great, I think that kind of sparked your entrepreneurial pursuit. It did. I went to In again. that aspect. It, you were always, uh, you were kind of half, half assing it. it a little uh, bit. 100%. Uh, you were on the ropes. You didn't know yeah. if it was the best thing for you, yourself. Always. You're right. 100%. But when you got there, you're like, man, I'm so impressed by not only him, people but me. the tons of people that went there. 100%. And it was just a great ecosystem around yeah, it. It was. Right? Yeah. It was just, 
he's he's an inspirational character but there's other people who also want to do the same and yes. and and create great companies that other people could work at and also climb the ladder of financial it success. It provides solution to the world and, and services that can help the world get better at the same time. No, well, some of them is profit. Some of them want to help the world, right? I mean, that's sure. another topic. Yeah. Back to, yeah, you surprised that it was a gift. You, we, have, we have Secret Santa on Eid. Oh, yeah, Secret Eid. Secret yeah, Eid. Yeah. Eid, for those that don't know, it's our holiday. As Muslims, we celebrate Eid. And I remember you printed out a piece of paper. You gave it to me. I was about to have <laughs> tears in my eyes. We have a picture of that. Yeah, I think oh, it was video too. The video, yeah. video and picture. I'm gonna have my team put that up in, a, in the B-roll here. Yeah. And I went to that show, the conference in Hollywood, Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, yep. and met him there. Mm -hmm. And but I was leading. I, everything was leading up to that, mm. right? What I'm what I'm gonna say and do. And I made a lot of good contacts. I'm going back to the law of attraction thing. Like you have to put the work in. Mm -hmm. And I made a lot of good contacts. And then, and then second year I went back again. And second year you can see a big difference. The first year I was wearing t-shirts and jeans. Second year I had a suit on. Mm -hmm. So every, as the years going by, it's like I'm growing into into a different role, a different journey, and a different chapter in my life. But I'm putting the work into it. Mm -hmm. I can I just sit there and, and do a lot of attraction and say, "Oh, it's gonna come to me." Yeah, to put the work yeah. into it, right? But unfortunately, I mean, it's all about statistics and odds, right? right? I mean, there's gonna be a lot of people who will drive it forward, who will do everything right by the book. You know, doing the law of attraction of manifestation at home, going to the right places at the right time. But I mean, luck is an unfortunate feature of life events happen. and things happen personal events health yeah. events there's things that you outside of your control you can't control everything and i think it's it, sh it should it's just a bummer of life right you just can't but it is it is nice to be in an ecosystem right where other people are just driving it forward because you don't want to be the only person by yourself because mm -hmm. you can only insp i feel like there's a certain breed of human that can self motivate and self-inspire themselves outside and even against all odds with people chattering in their ear saying that you're not going to make it but then there's the rest of us yeah. who need the influence and support of other people especially strangers you're right you said it i mean motivation and the new thing with motivation everyone says it now motivations is like that's, that's just bullshit man like Someone like yourself, you've been very, very good at, at being athletic and in good shape, and you always eat healthy. You work out. You're not, you're not, you're not waiting for motivation. To be successful, you can't wait for motivation, right? You're inspired. That's one thing. Being just taking action and being consistent. So, you, to your point, you get you get around people with like-minded thoughts and intentions and goals. Yeah, motivation is one thing, but they you know they inspire you. Mm -hmm. and they can keep you accountable. Yeah, Sorry. accountability, right? It's huge, man. Mm -hmm. it's huge. We all slip up. We all slip up. We all say things that we're gonna do, and we don't go by, through with it. By the way, I want to prove your point wrong for a second. It was 2018, 2019, You came to visit us from. I don't know if you're living in in in. You were living somewhere else. Twenty eighteen, I was. It's still in Portland, Oregon. Yes. In yeah. Atlanta or Oregon, or 2019, we bought the new house in Miami, yeah. Miramar. That's 2019. Yeah. And you got Isa and Iman, my daughter, your nieces, this uh, little teepee or what's that plastic? Oh, like a, a little princess castle. Yeah. Teepee. Yeah. I'm, I'm with my time. <laughs> uh, uh, princess castle. They want the same one. Right. And I told you You that. told me that. Yeah. And but and I, I didn't even ask you. But I didn't I tell just you. I bought it and sent it over. Yeah. No, you brought it with you. Oh, you sent it over. I, I just bought it from Amazon. And sent you had it no over. idea. But I never asked you yeah, no one what told they you. wanted. And yeah. we came to see it. Like, by the way, I have news for you. Law of Attraction does it. If <laughs> stuff like that is just makes you. By the way, then it goes back to God. We're getting metaphysical here, right? Huh? Huh? You believe in God. Does God deliver? Is there a God or not, right? Mm. Um without getting too much into it, like what's your thoughts about God overall? Einstein said that God doesn't roll the dice. That there's no randomness. And everything is can be calculated. 
Does that leave room for miracles? Does that leave room for just coincidences? I don't know. I don't know. There's some there's some weird stuff that have happened to me in my life too. Yeah, you told me. And I think that's a smaller one. But there's mm. there's other personal stuff that have happened where is there something looking out for you? Uh, someone else is is this whole bad luck thing, right? Is is you're just destined to not make it in life or to make it in life is all odds on your favor you know it's I, i'm a very deterministic guy what that means is that it's cause and effect so if i can calculate what is causing something happening i could f extrapolate that and find out the end result find out the effect so that's a very scientific mindset but i think it's kind of boring mm. I think it's fun to leave some room of, well, you know, and aside from afterlife, right? In this life, I like to think that there's at certain moments that there could be some intervention from a higher being. Because I think a lot of people deserve that. I think mm. a lot of people struggle and have hardship. And sometimes it just takes that one good moment, or that one good day to completely change your lives. And is that, is that God interve intervening? <clears throat> is that just by coincidence? You're is right. that the randomness of, of because there is some chaos, right, in, in nature that we don't understand? The butterfly effect, for instance, right? You know, you do one good deed and that trickles down to hundreds of people down the line. And yeah. that last person that it affects, it changes their life forever. And they, they live a prosperous life for, for generations to come. That I, I want to believe in. Right? And that's why I do as much good in the form of not only financially, but smiling at people, smiling at random people, opening the door for people, uh, paying for other people's food and drinks. These are random acts of kindness that you don't know how far they could proliferate. And so when it comes to the whole idea of God, the whole, I would say it's now, I think it's it's the archaic way of thinking, mm -hmm. you know, reading from basically a, a script, how to li live your life. I think fundamentally, if you're just, if you're just doing well and you're putting good energy out there, it'll come back to you, but you also make a huge difference in many people's lives. Love it. You got so. that from me. That's my my impact on your <laughs> life, man. No, no, that you're 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 for sure. No, it's a, it's a huge a impact from you're, that, but also yeah. my upbringing. Your upbringing, um, like that. my in laws, my wife. Yeah, you no, know. no, no. That, by the way, let's go back there for a second. You have amazing in laws, a very loving people, very humble people, and good people. Like you want to say, people say good energy, good vibes. That defines your in laws to a T. God bless them. The, the Palomas are awesome. Vanessa herself has, has all those qualities. I what you're saying, I have that's so I got that from my grandmother. My mom was very bitter. My father left her, single mom, Brooklyn, New York, struggling. My grandmother, man, she was like, no matter how bad things are, she was just smiling. And you know, like she was from she was born in India and then she came to Pakistan and the partition happened, so she lost her family. Her dad got his like head cut off in front of her and then she was barefooted when she got to Pakistan. Wait, what? How, what that was because of because like the, the partition. Revolt yeah, the, the partition, I guess, between the Sikhs and, and I don't want to quote anything wrong, but yeah, like he was, they, they, people got, people got killed on both sides of the partition. Mm. Right, right, right. You know much about the partition at all? No, I unfortunately yeah, I haven't read up a lot. I, me neither. I, I feel bad, but I should. Yeah, we should, both should. We should invest but, some time. I mean, both of our, I think our origins probably have some history there. Yeah. But like this woman had so much bad stuff, and she was so loving. And she used to always say to me, like, "No Hindus are good, and Sikh Sikhs are good." Mm. Her her brother got shot in Fort Lauderdale and murdered, and by uh, a young black African American per person. Mm. A lot of our social fr friends were like very racist. They were new to the country, and like, "Oh, mm. they're bad." Mm. She like, "No, like, just because." No, not all black people are bad. Not all white people are good. Not every all Pakistan people are good. Mm -hmm. She was just so positive, and she, my grandmother had a huge influence, as you know, and mm -hmm. I don't know, influence on my upbringing. And she would randomly give 
people like money. She had no money herself, but give people to help spread positivity. Yeah. So I agree with you. You give out light, you get light back, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'll give you a question. Segue to another very important chapter in my life and your life too. My stroke happening. I look back and I, whatever Dr. Lima has shared with me and my mm. friend has shared with me, you share with me, dad has shared with me, my uncle has shared with me. It was some, some, a lot of them say it was a miracle. Yeah, I mean, the odds were against you. So this because we have about 20, I'm going to keep going. I'll pay him extra. So talk about the stroke. How'd you hear about it? How, how, but you were young, relatively, and you flew in right away. Mm. How did that impact you? How'd you hear about it? Go and get the backstory. You know, it, we all think about how we're going to lose our parents. Right. To, I mean, not all the time, but sometimes when you're in a somewhat depressive state, you're like, okay, you're going to get that phone call, right? Right. It's like the law will come to the hospital, something has happened, or it already happened. And uh, it was... Christmas Day, Christmas Day morning, and so I was with my in-laws. The time they were, we were in Portland, Oregon, and we traditionally celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. So in the morning, we're actually watching the movie Sound of Music. By the way, it's a tradition of us to mm-hmm. do it. It's, uh, and I got the phone call, and my mom is hysterically crying, and she's just saying, "Horam is sick. You need to come right now." And I'm like, "What is he? What do you mean he's sick?" Like. Mm-hmm. Because you got like a, an infection? Like, wh- what do you mean he's sick? She's crying and then hands the phone to my dad. My dad's like, Horam had a stroke. You need to come right now. He's unconscious. Mm. So I'm like, I got, at that moment, like, your heart sank. Because I had never thought something would happen to you. Mm. Out of everyone, like, something could happen to yeah. would have been the elderies of her family, right? Natural thought. So and uh, so I got my flight. I you know it was like the, the flight in the afternoon because also my in laws were going to leave in that afternoon, and we both we all drove to the to the airport. And I was I was very quiet. I didn't I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to see. I didn't talk to anyone until I got there. I got there in the evening. Um, I think my dad picked me up. I can't remember that. But what I do remember is when I got to the hospital and I walked to the into the ICU. The first thing that happened is your your good friend Umar just hugged me. Mm. He didn't I didn't even get to see you yet. He just hugged me. But then I could see from the corner of my eye you were intubated and you're just got so many lines, IV drip lines and all this stuff going going into you. And then I, I see Saima, I see I see my mom, my dad and everyone is distraught, and Simon is in shambles, you know. And she, unfortunately, you know, when when times are rough, Simon could be a little pessimistic. She's like, "This is it. He's not coming back. Mm. He's, he's dead, or uh, he's a vegetable at this point." And you know, your friends were very positive. Uh, they're like, "You know, it's fine. It's good. We're gonna figure it out." So you went through a series of uh, MRIs. Mm-hmm. And as you're doing the MRIs, we're getting more and more understanding. What was happening to your brain is that it detected that you weren't getting blood on your left hemisphere, I think. Right. Or your right. Yeah. It was, it was, it yeah. was, it was one of the hemispheres. The left one, but the right side gave in, right? The, left, the yes. right side were not working. So it's right. the left side. So it's the left hemisphere. Yeah. And what your brain was doing is shifting blood laterally. You could see it in the MRI. And uh, the funny, the radiologist, he was on Survivor Man. By the way, he he opened up with that. He's like, oh, by the way, I was on Survivor Man. I don't know why. It was like his thing. He's very casual. It's 1 o'clock in the morning, mm. by the way. He's he's telling us about your MRI, MRI results. The Survivor what? He was on Survivor Man. The, the uh, show? The show, Survivor Man. The one that played in the early 2000s. Oh, my God. I know, yeah. Very okay. odd. I looked him okay. up after. <laughs> Doctor, okay, yeah, okay. Got He's a radiologist. I don't remember his name. Spiky hair. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Very, guy. very charismatic guy. Yes, yes. Super casual. He's yes. like his. He's like his brain is actually doing well mm. for the situation. Like the clots have detached now uh, because they removed the clot, but you still had the your arteries basically detached, 
right? It, it, there's layers to it mm -hmm. and it detached. So it was so a potential that your body could produce another clot. Mm -hmm. So they needed to put stents in right away. But yours was at a 90 degree angle. So you had one on the at the forefront and one after the 90 degree angle. But it was all detached. And they don't make stents that are 90 degree angles. They only make them in straight uh, straight slots. So Dr. Lima comes in too. He's like, look, we're going to put it in the morning. There's no guarantee. I mean, there's a high likelihood it'll go well. And it sounds like whatever. I have no control of this, this situation. We looked at you one more time. We held your hand. Hope you would make it through the night. And went home. Didn't sleep at all. Yeah. Woke up the next morning and you had your procedure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you. they put in the stents. And Lima said from the MRIs that it looks like the stents are going to hold up. And it was it was a huge relief. But there was still a chance that your body could produce another clot sure. and go in. So it was kind of like every hour it was getting better. Like the, mm -hmm. when they didn't see a clot, it was going to be better and better. And then I think after the after 24 hours after your stents were in, we did another MRI and it completely opened up. So it meant that. Uh, there shouldn't be a clot that formed naturally. How did that change your life? Someone so close to you, someone you love, someone who loves you, the brother, brotherhood we had. I mean, we always, I mean, yeah, we fought, but we always came back together, always strong, always kept in touch. The one thing about you, I always love that your parents would call you, never, never picked up. If you want somebody to me to call you and you and pick, pick up, up. you pick up. <laughs> like, what was that for you to say, man, like, this may not be, you know, he may not be there anymore? Shit, I was it was hard, man. But, but, yeah. so Omer, my friend Omar told me that he, my your brother in law was like he was he was like, I never thought him I never saw him like that. I never thought he would be that out of it. Like he like the way Omar talks about it, like you got punched in the stomach. You know, like in, in boxing you are like you're 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 hurting your you're out you're out and, you're out and about. Going back now to a miracle, like I hear that story, my story. And a lot of people came up to me and say, hey, man, we did prayers for you. I have Christian friends, I have Jewish friends, I have a lot of Muslim friends. Mm. They all did prayers for me. Was that prayer, power of prayer? Was that a good deed my mom had did maybe in her time when they came back to me? Mm. It was something I did. And I impacted other people in uh, small ways. The people came after me after that and, and mm. said, hey, you don't remember me, but you were nice to me at a party and, mm. and you gave me attention and that really helped me. Man, the, right. the amount of people yeah. that came that I didn't even know you had a personal relationship with yeah. who came to the hospital just to see you and to just to give that prayer, give that positive energy. I mean, it was immense. Um, what do you think about that miracle? Do that, you think yeah. that perhaps Again, that's, be a miracle? That's, that's what I believe in it. That's what I want to believe That's in what it. you're saying. I, I want it to exist for those reasons. Yeah, And too. it's kind of selfish. Yeah, it is. It, and at the end of the day, when you lose someone, it's it's not it's you that's hurting right sure. it's i used i used to always think that so i lost i lost a good friend of mine in uh the early part of my college career he's actually the reason why vanessa and i are together today mm. just a, just a short little snippet about it please he was a romantic and i was not a romantic i didn't think in that way to to create these elaborate surprises and and one was a scavenger hunt, a scavenger hunt to ask her to prom. Actually, no, to ask her to be my girlfriend. Oh, and so sweet. It was, it was just so, like we set cards out and we coordinated with her friend who uh -huh. helped us out. And it, it, was, it, was, it was spot on because Vanessa was also romantic because of her father is romantic. So she has high expectations. Um, but anyways, so I, I lost him at a, a very young age and I was very distraught with that um and i i thought if he had survived like we we probably would have been friends to, to this day i think so so sad and sad and beautiful it's bittersweet right i mean you have this yeah. fond memory i guess this feeling from your eyes but we said we, we used to say as his friends that death is a blessing in disguise wow because you don't feel anything as far as we know right because we're in this meat body right right now we're, we're getting neural impulses so if i pinch my finger if i burn my hand that's all neurochemicals right you don't have that when you're dead your body's right there we're looking at it it's no yeah, longer functioning that's true so that's what we thought about right and 
So anyways, it was it was selfish for me to think that I don't want him to die. But I thought there was so many good years ahead of you that you sure. could have enjoyed. And I I wanted it for you. Yeah. I wanted it so bad. Oh, that's so sweet. And that's very so touching. I want to believe in miracles. I do. And I, I don't discount. That's and why I, I'm not an atheist. No. I'm agnostic. Sure. Right? There's some science, scientific. I, I don't have proof to make the claim nor sure. nor do i have enough proof to disprove it sure in all means because coincidences happen they do happen you know it's so funny five years ago you're so against this cop topic and i'm so i'm seeing you grow i'm seeing you you talk i'm, you, I'm hearing you talk and, and give your perspective show so much growth you had man i mean you have I, i've known you for 20 years the growth the amount of growth you've had blah i'm so proud of you and I've seen segments of your life, like a chapter. Like, I, like, like, like a, if I was to write a book or a movie on you, like, I have, like, sequels on you. Like, I remember the first chapter we started together and, and seeing you with the basketball and, and your friends and the earrings and, and then number <laughs> the two, gauges. The gauges. And then number yeah. two, then our wedding, you, you, were, you actually, like, you had the thing, the, the scarf and then Welcome to New York song. Oh, I mean, you imitated <laughs> I me. did a little uh, satire yes. reproduction that of you. That was so funny. Yeah. It was spot on. And then, like, I remember one time, a story I can never forget. We were traveling back from South Florida. You went to U, you went to USF in Tallahassee. No, you went to FSU. FSU. Yeah. I went to USF in Tampa. Mm -hmm. And we used to drive from South Florida together. And one time we flew together. It was yeah. Eid, the holiday. And we both, I think we ate some bad food. I don't remember the story, but mm -hmm. we flew back to Tampa. Mm -hmm. I had a very inter interesting individual pick us up <laughs> and drop us back. And uh, that, I'll yeah. leave that topic out of it. Yeah. And then we're like, I'm like, bro, it's just, you know, you go, I'm tired. I'm like, yeah, I have one bed, sleep next to me. We're, we're brothers. Mm -hmm. And we're both like going to the bathroom and we're sleeping together and we're like talking like, how you doing? I'm like, I'm good. How you doing? I'm like, I'm good. My brother skipped class to stay with me, and he like, he got up like, no, 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 I have to go back. I have to go back. I have a test. I have to study. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> Suddenly, he's, such, he's so studious. His whole life, I know him like, you're, you're the opposite. No, no one can ever think, looking back at your high school year, the blah, mm -hmm. the graffiti, the high school years, to think that you'd be the success, success, successful, mm -hmm. ambitious leader in this corporation that you are leading now, God bless you for doing such a good, amazing job. You'll be that person. Like, no way, dude. You're like a slacker, mm -hmm. right? And like for you, just like Simon was for me, your sister was like for me, that that changed. Vanessa Paloma was that for you. Mm -hmm. And you got up and like, hey, help me get up and put my stuff together. And we, I walked you downstairs, yep. passed your car, gave you a hug and a kiss. Like, yep. I always give you some money. In for gas. Yeah, that's true. You always spotted <laughs> me a, du uh, a 20, yeah, like, you're not you know, a 20, uh, you know, buy and yourself uh, some yeah. candy or something. I guess yeah. my grandmother, by the way. My yeah. grandmother did that. And so, yeah. and, um, and I gave, your mom told me, like, don't spoil him, don't spoil him, he's getting spoiled. But you're like, you're, <laughs> like, you're, you're my brother. And I also wanted a young, younger brother. So you right. were that like, answer to me. Yeah. So I, you went, I'm, like, I'm sort of worried about you, right? I've always been this worrier, right? Like, you know, like, blah, you got home. And you went, you got home. Um, I don't know where I was going with this topic quickly. Going somewhere with this, I think I think you're going to talk about just, I guess my drive just to, to be disciplined, right? Well, just to yeah, and so you you went yeah, so that happened. I kind of lost my thought again. Going back into it, the memories we've had, man, we have some crazy crazy memories together. Yeah. Whether it's cars, partying. Movie topics, yeah. song topics, we talk about girls. But I, I think what was the the best part of it all is that I had a male perspective. Yeah. That could understand my own insecurities, uh, my judgments of things, my pursuance of, of things, and I had a different. I had a perspective that I could trust. Right. Having having a male figure in your life doesn't have to come from necessarily your father or your cousin no. even someone you're related to no but even having a good buddy of yours makes a huge difference um that can not only support you give you the the, the confidence that you need when you don't have it but uh just to be there for you but i overall i think i got it i, I got it from you consistently yeah randomly too i i'd, I'd call you and we chat for a little bit i throw some ideas at you or some problems I was having, 
and you you thought about it and then you gave me very sound advice yeah at times and sometimes i didn't agree with it no. but it gave me a fresh perspective yes and and by the way vice versa i mean i called you for multiple things and sometimes i don't agree with it but it gives me another perspective and same from 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 me to you man like you did a lot um but let's just close on uh another five ten minutes we'll wrap up close on some really important topics in your life you know your wife the impact your wife had in, had in your life talk about that like how do you guys meet and how the whole thing come up and how we're mm. in one room <laughs> i'm sleeping at your house yeah so i i i wasn't supposed to graduate high school you're bad not bad you so i, not I, I wasn't as a bad boy i wasn't part of that even i was associated with that click but i wasn't the worst one i was a, kind of an in-between sure right so i was just lazy too but i never gave my teachers any hard you're time a bit of rebel yeah i just didn't like rules i didn't like following the rules <laughs> this is not the guy this is not the guy standing in front of you yet but yeah. i still don't like the rules yeah sometimes when they you, don't yeah that's true yeah uh, when they don't yeah anyways yeah but uh so vanessa she saw the potential in me and and i always got good grades on tests and but i never did the homework i never you did apply yourself the whole i never did the projects uh, so vanessa's me and her started to have feelings for each other you know we're high school sweethearts so we i pursued her very heavily because we just our personalities clicked a lot but she had her life already planned she knew what it, she wanted to do um she wanted to become an engineer she had she was interviewing with Brown and another, I, I think, Ivy League University. And she settled on FSU. She told me she got a good scholarship. Her parents planned well, so she had a college fund. And I'm like, man, where the hell am I going to go after high school? I have no idea. Yeah. And I don't want to live with my parents. I, I've So I was known for running away from the house. You know, I didn't. Your own little world. I was so disconnected from yes. my parents. Culture, even, everything. Everything. I just... It but repulsed you, me. But they, when, they, when they needed you, you were there, you were loving, and they always loved you, but you were, yeah. like, we were getting engaged, and it's like, I'm out of here, man. We had the running <laughs> ceremony. Yeah. I'm like, hey, where are you going, buddy? And like, oh, man, I have to get out. And Go hang out with my yeah, boys. Yeah, and, uh, and that was yeah. you, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, I was, like, I was, like, with the bad boys at sure. night. Sure. But during the school day, I was with, like, kind of the nerdy crew. It's interesting. That's, like, a yeah. th that comedy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Th yeah. Yeah, because I took AP classes, yeah. I took honors classes, and I did pretty good on the yes. test. I just never did the work. Sure. Um, so, so she was able to convince my teachers that if I turned in retroactively all my work, yeah, I knew, knew the that they would give me either a B or an A, depending wow. on the quality of work. And so I ended up graduating with a 3.0. So I got Florida Bright Futures, and then I understood something financially behind the whole college system that there is a a lot of grants especially as a minority sure that you could receive yeah so i started researching i'm like how can i get money to go to school and i also looked at the cost per credit and i'm like you know what i can make this work and pocket some cash so after i did some math and i was also working on the side at Publix, and i was doing very well at that um paying me minimum wage and Publix is a great place to start working because it's great to build your customer service skills. 100%. How to interact with people, small talk. I think it's a great place for they loved you. young kids. They loved you, but you had a good attitude. Yeah, I just I was, I wanted to make money. Everything. And and I, I made I made good money. Yeah, not yeah. money. You, you, you gave money to my power. You always had a good attitude. Good. You have, you have a beautiful smile, you know, and, and your attitude was so good. And I remember every time I went back to the public, they knew me as Billy's brother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just friendly. I made friends with everybody. Yeah. It was just, it made sense. Yeah. If I'm gonna be at work all day, I'm gonna make, sure. I'm gonna be, f have fun doing it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, anyways, I I figured out that I could get FAFSA. I can get a full ride of FAFSA mm -hmm. by doing some tax strategies with my parents. Um, and by doing that, I got a full scholarship for that and i was like i'm gonna go to community college first two years That's awesome i'm not gonna go remember that. to a four-year university because it's a fraction of a price per credit smartest, smartest and moment. then i can transfer after and then i c the end degree the bachelor of science well, degree it's what counts it's what counts that's the end paper that has the big prestigious name of the university on it so that was my whole that was my whole strategy and uh you know i i followed vanessa the whole time we moved to Tallahassee together. I went to TCC, Tallahassee Community College. Uh, then I transferred over to Florida State. She decided to do mechanical engineering 
I decided to do mechanical engineering. It's perfect. We worked together. We took the same classes, and then it took us six years. It took us longer than expected. I had to take out some extra loans, but it's that's all fine. Good. Yeah, it's all in the in the rear rear, rear mirror, right? They say you in the back, you're driving. Yeah, that's your history. I got here. How I got here? That's it. I don't. It wasn't by the book necessarily. That's it. But it taught me a lot of life skills. Yeah, and uh, well, you're a power couple on both of you, man. You both are killing it. You're you're. Just good people. You're always there for us when we need you guys. Our family is amazing. You you lucked out in many ways, man. Yeah. And by the way, now I, you know people always say you looked you lucked out by. I, but give the guy the, give the guy some credit too. I mean, you both lucked out, right? I mean, you're a yeah. good person too. Yeah, we found each other. We, we lived other. like we essentially grew up uh, in a radius of two miles I from know, each other. I know. Which, by the way, at odd like that's actually in favor. That usually happens. By the way, I think me and your sister oh. were two miles away. This too, my uncle lives right. On oh, the, right, yeah, yeah. in Miramar. So I lived for two years, then I moved out. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. What are you doing now? To wrap up. So, what, what are you doing now? Yeah, so I'm uh, a business development manager for a silicone injection molding company. Uh, I've been in the industry for eight years, um, so I'm technical sales essentially, but also developing the market for an Austrian company in the U.S. side. Um, they give me a lot of autonomy and a, a good little marketing budget to execute uh, their goals, uh, essentially, and very aggressive. You're what they call, uh, Patrick called the entrepreneur. Correct. That's exactly how they sold it to me. It's exactly what the managing director said. And it made me very excited uh, because they said, look, if you don't like the, the position right away, even though they gave me a guaranteed bonus, that you can take the bonus and just That's take amazing. Off. Because they knew what they were selling to me sure. as an employee of the company. And they give you all this other um, uh, hopes and dreams, too, in the future. But in the meantime, I'm very happy with what I do. You're killing it. And I get to interact with people. And it's, it's a niche industry. Sure. Right? There's not a lot of players in there. No. Which means that I make very good very good salary as well. Beautiful. So proud of you, man. Who, who would have known? But little Billy Boy in 2004... Running around in time top playing basketball, one day will make such good money. Yeah, no one ever knows. No one ever knows. Right? And it you gotta apply yourself. You have to do your own research. And every day, this is this should be your life motto. Be better than the person you were yesterday. I love that. I know it's a cliche probably at this point, but, but it's really good. Do it, man. You're right. Do something. Every day, learn something new. Something new. Do instead of doing twenty push ups, do twenty five push ups. Learn a different subject. Do it. That's awesome. So, your engineer, your wife's engineer, you all love, you all live in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. What's the future looking like for you guys? Atlanta is a very up and coming city. Uh, the cost of living is pretty good. We have a lot of manufacturing coming to the state, giving a lot of tax incentives. So, I don't see us going anywhere anytime soon because I can also drive up an hour to the Smoky Mountains and enjoy some get away. outdoor life. Yeah. Get away from the city life a little bit. But, and the food from all different types of cultures. Amazing. I went there. I loved it. And I also travel a lot for work. So Atlanta's a Delta hub. It, it makes a lot of shout sense. Out, shout out to Delta. My, my, one of my best friends worked for Delta. We, you know, we, we've mentioned all our family members except for one person. He's, he's going to get really upset if you don't mention uh, our buddy in South Florida right now. Uh, Rayon. We love you. We, but we, I'm thinking about it. We mentioned all the family members. We never said anything about it. I don't, I don't think we've dropped his name. Yes. No. You want to drop it for him? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Ryan Uckter, man. We, uh, we love you, man. We love Honestly, you, Honestly, it, you're living in one of the, the best times. Yes, and to is. grow up in these times, there's so many opportunities. Uh, and yeah, I can't wait to see you grow up to yes. the 20-year-old, oh. the 30-year-old. He's got to kill it. He's going to kill it yeah. in so many ways. I want to make sure he doesn't feel left out, right? I mean, of course. Yes, we love you, Ryan. Are you on social media, buddy? Can we? Can anyone follow you anywhere? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram. It's Billy Dr sixteen. It's my handle. Um, Yeah, you can. You're not active as much. You follow stuff. I post some trips here and there. It's all about keeping in touch with family and friends. Um, Not. I don't have any anything to sell. uh, or anything else to contribute. um, But. uh, yeah, if anybody wants to to talk, DM yeah. me. If you got something interesting in the manufacturing world or for entrepreneurship, I'm also interested uh, as I am have my little pet projects going on super as well. Super smart, super smart. I'll butt on you any day. Um, but with that being said, in closing, man, uh, you are my baby brother. You're my younger brother. Um, I have a list. 
I haven't, I haven't told you this. I'm telling this on, 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 on with my audience. I have a list of five people, and um, you are one of those five people that I circle as trust, the Rat Pack, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> uh, the the people. Uh, and so, like, if it doesn't mean anything to you or not, I know we it does. we bicker here and there. I know I sometimes I could be a little bit of a, a, a bitch to you and <laughs> complain. <laughs> But one really thing I really want to tell you, and I never told you this, you know, as as I mean, I'm, I'm born in America, but I have this right DC side of me, you know, I I, I yell and, and, and throw tantrums. Mm. As an older brother, they do that in our culture, and you are the younger brother who just takes it, and you never spoke back to me. That meant a lot. So. Mm. No, man, I have so much respect for you, man. Thank you, man. So much. I love you, bro. Thanks for asking asking me to come on here. I was I was waiting for you to hit a certain subscriber count <laughs> before I jump on. <laughs> you said that to me. I remember that. Well, where, where are we at? I think we're fourteen thousand. Fourteen thousand. So nice. No, yeah. it's gonna be one hundred forty thousand. It's gonna be one point four million. There you go. Yeah, it's all about just inspiring That's others it, man. to, to well, get to a, a. I know today my camera yeah. watching here, my, my brother here, Vlad Rafik, he is an inspiration to me in many ways, and um, please. Follow him if you can on social media. He'll, he'll truly impact your life. Thanks, man. Love Thank you, brother. Man. Thank you. Love you too, man. Yeah.